welcome back the wonderful people of crypto, blockchain, Web3, NFT, buzzword here. DeFi, the next buzzword. We're here to help you through that journey with all the best knowledge around as usual. And have we got a jam-packed show for you this week. We are starting with, you may have seen our show about network a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, lots of big changes going on over there, lots of fear, people worried what's going on. Uh, there's been lots of progress recently, which is good. And today we have Linus, the new CEO, who's one of the founders, uh, for what I believe is probably his first interview. So we're going to be focusing... Scoop. A scoop. We're going to be focusing more on positive going forward as opposed to what's happened in the past. I know there's a lot of landowners, vehicle owners, avatar owners out there, ourselves included, who at one point were thinking, wowzers, are we going to end up with a pile of useless digital binary that's worth nothing? But clearly these guys are starting to move forward. So we wanted to get hold of Linus and say, right, tell us what is going on. We have talked about this event a few times and we are going to talk about it again with Ashton from Zebu Live. We're going to be there next week from London. So we're going to chat to Ashton all about what you can expect from this super exciting Web3 based blockchain event coming up. It's going to be great to be getting back out there into the whole kind of blockchain event space. We haven't been to one in a while. We've gone how to talk to people IRL. I know. We went to DeFi Live, which is by the same guys last year, and it was a fantastic event. And this one is shaping up to be a cracker as well. There is details down below of how you can get hold of a ticket. So if you haven't got one yet and you're in London, you want to come and hang out with the new kids and check out some of the amazing content those guys have got for you, then check it out. Let's crack straight on with the show and our first segment with Linus from Network. So as we know, it's been a bumpy road at Network in the recent sort of few weeks, but hopefully things are getting back on track. We have today with us one of the founders and new CEO, Linus, for I believe his first interview. So we are excited to chat to him about what's been going on. So Linus, are you there? Hey, hey Ash and Lisa, thanks for having me. We're really excited to be chatting to you today. Um, you're no stranger to Network, you're one of the founders, but you're now in the hot seat as CEO uh, with a lot of really exciting things happening. Could you talk about uh, the direction Network is going since your launch of Mindrunner? You know, we've turned a good deal of focus towards like improving how we organize and operate as a studio since recent events. You know, we're seeing a lot of results with the community and partners all together. Things are moving in the right direction. Like a metaverse project like ours is a giant project, right? In many ways, it's like making multiple complex games in one project with a financial system added as well. So to accomplish this, you know, we, we've broken up development into vertical slices and all combined make the complete sustainable world. So with Mind Runner, that game proved out much of what we built as a foundation for everything else. You know, the back end structure, the metaverse interactions, the economy, you know, players can see like visuals and gameplay, but they don't see, you know, all the important other foundational work that goes behind a metaverse, right? Like things like player account systems, um, our pipelines that we develop as a studio in Unreal Engine 5, that's only been out, you know, for four or five months. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of things have happened in the last year to make the metaverse actually a reality. Um, and next steps for Mindrunner um, is to be able to read wallets and allow players to access specific characters from our NFT partners with also the play to earn system going live. Yeah. And while preparing that launch, a good amount of the team is moving towards metaverse interaction development and where we'll have things like multiplayer environments, social interactions with text and voice chat, transactions between players, um, and one of our cornerstone systems that we're calling the venue system. You know, this allows us to open up like um, metaverse places like clubs, stores, you know, art galleries, everything like that, to, and personal homes and apartments, you know, real world activations. So, um, you know, with that also will open up transportation opportunities as a way for players to get from venue to venue. So I think people will enjoy that. 
And this also comes with the added economic system that we're making. You know, we're setting up the world so that players can earn and spend in-game currency through actions in the world and earn and spend real world currency through the network token by doing actions both in game and in the real world. Like for example, um, content creators can use a 3D software like Maya and create assets for the platform and be able to sell it through the network token to users or organizations that are looking for content uh, to populate the world. In the past, there has been a sort of bit of criticism that there hasn't been enough communication, there hasn't been enough sort of showing of what's been going on. And I know that you guys have, you know, recently said that you're really committed now to answering th things in the Telegram channel, which has been happening, you know, telling people uh, exactly what's going on. Also, you mentioned about, you know, potentially previewing different land areas at some point in October. I know, obviously, there's a lot of land and transport and avatar owners out there that are just really keen to see you know, see this virtual land they have and see it sort of working. So in terms of, you know, delivering those those aspects, you've you've just got a, I guess, a slew of work over the next few months to start hitting those milestones. Yep, definitely. But uh, it seemed to be on track. So, I mean, looking forward to the end of the year. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, in terms of actually seeing the, you know, the land in the different zones, it's, you know, it's exciting to sort of see the map, know where the pieces you bought are, but to actually start, yeah. you know, being able to actually interact with those and maybe even, you know, build things on them as well. So we know that's a priority. So, yeah, um, really looking forward to delivering the sandbox and getting people to be able to start adding content to the platform. Yeah. And is there anything people can actually do themselves to start preparing for all of these really exciting things that are coming up? There's certainly things we can do in the meantime. Okay, so, you know, with a metaverse project like ours, where we're, you know, empowering input from all these different people, right? People that want a battle royale, people that want land, you know, to build on the land, people that want vehicle utility. Or, um, we need to develop both tools and standards for everyone to utilize to make the world consistent. For example, talking to a partner NFT project about bringing in vehicles, right? We need to design vehicles, classes of vehicles. We need to create, you know, the vehicle traits for racing that allows for projects to like compete on a, a level playing field of a racing game, right? Mm -hmm. um, we basically need to design systems for every category of assets or experience you know, for, for experiences, especially ones involving rewards, you know, or sometimes some type of monetization, you know, or it would be, it'd become completely unbalanced and impossible to structure. So it's the same for buildings and land. Um, we're designing our building specifications so that there are standards for all content creators and landholders to follow. Uh, one of the ways that we develop these standards is you know, building the assets ourselves, testing it ourselves, and then having those guidelines ready for everyone else, right? For example, can we use a standard real world door size for all everyone, all partners? You know, does it work if one of our partners has a cartoon dinosaur for avatars? Um, they're all questions we need to answer and put into our standards. Um, but what everyone, you know, what everyone can do is I think landowners should envision what they want for land, you know, what they want to use the land for, write it into a proposal and get it over to us. Because, you know, we have an extremely strong design team that is trying to account for all possible use cases, right, with the venue system. But, you know, it's entirely possible that there's a different use case out there that people have, and we need to plan for that in these standards as well. So as thoughtful of a plan as people can craft, put it together, send it to us, and we can work to achieve it all. Well, we'll definitely be getting in touch on that because we, we have some very large parcels of land ourselves. We've been working with you know some very high-end 3D artists who are architects that are very excited to start you know building in this space and start putting together concepts that work for membership areas and, and to really add some value to this space. Um, I mean, obviously, awesome. people are, at the moment, a lot of people who've got land have just got their land and their transport staked, ourselves included. So presumably, if you're, you know, have long term plans for your land, that's the best thing to do currently. So it's a way to still get utility while we're 
developing, right? That's the goal. Last thing, really, if there's, you know, if there's anybody sort of out there at the moment that's still, you know, trying to, it's still a bit nervous about things that have happened and looking at the future and as landowners and what would you just say to them? What would you say kind of the, you know, looking at the next six, 12 months of the journey of network, what's the, what's the most exciting part of that at the moment? The most exciting part is, is that we're seeing everything come together, you know, really try to look at what's involved in the development of the mining game, right? You know, the connection of the wallet to be able to access assets like that and the whole play to earn system that covers basically every, you know, a lot of what's in the metaverse, right? So, you know, it all is just scaled up and then, you know, the metaverse will be live with everything, you know, people want. And we'll be able to get in our yacht and blast around in our yacht having a fantastic virtual party. Definitely. Great. Well, hopefully, <laughs> you know, over the next few months as things develop, maybe we can get you back on the show, um, you know, give us a bit of an update of what's going on. And I know how incredibly busy you are at the moment. So thank you for taking the time for our, we've got a lot of diehard network fans in our audience. So appreciate you taking the time. And um, oh, yeah, we yeah. look forward to catching up in the near future. Oh, thanks for having me. Yeah. And I guess, you know, if, if I could add one more thing, you know, I, I also would, you know, Love to just thank everyone in advance for their patience, you know, continued support, just like you guys. Um, you know, obviously, a departure of a team member in a leadership role can create challenges for any studio, you know, especially one that's acrimonious, just adds more to the complexity. But otherwise, we have just have so many fantastic people at the studio. Um, it's from the, like our amazing art team to engineers, to our really smart blockchain guys, um, to the QA team, to the designers, you know, it's really become an amazing group of 50 plus people that has only come together in the last nine months, I think. So, you know, we've already become a really strong studio. Just want to thank everyone. And, you know, yeah, recent changes internally were seen as sort of like, um, you know, breaking through this block that released a lot of bottled up positivity and initiative. So I think um, that the community is feeling that I think partners are feeling that with improved communication and, you know, sharing of real information and ideas. Right. Yeah. You know, and, you know, we're incredibly appreciative that the community cares at the level that they do and for being involved of creating you know i think what we all envision is the first real metaverse project in unreal engine 5 and uh, you know uh, we expect to reward them all in the coming months and years well it's the welcome return of blockchain events and next week's show we will be bringing from london's biggest web 3 show zebu live which is very exciting it is really exciting it has been a while since we've done a blockchain events but they're all coming back and we can't wait to be there and we are chatting to ashton to tell us all about it and what you can expect from the event so ashton are you there hello hey ash hey lisa how's it going Hi, we are good. We are so excited to come to Zebu next week. Uh, could you tell everyone watching what it's all about? Yeah, of course. So uh, I'm Ashton from, from Zebu Digital, working on Zebu Live. Um, we have been working on this conference for a little over eight months now. Um, pretty, pretty crazy how long we've come in such a short time. It seems like yesterday we were just deciding to move from DeFi Live to Zebu Live. So we did a bit of a rebrand earlier this year. And so we had about 700 people in person DeFi Live last year um, in London. That was great, got great feedback. And so we've taken that, iterated on it, made it bigger, better, more fun, more exciting, uh, bigger speakers, bigger brands, bigger names, and um, just really getting the London, UK um, community together um, in one place to have a great time, to learn, to network, um, to connect with each other, to find ways to work together towards the goal of mainstream adoption. We have some really big names coming to speak, um, including Stephen Bartlett, Stanny from Ave, Rita from HSBC, Matt Hancock of UK Parliament. I can go on and on. Um, for me, they're very exciting because I know a lot of them. I've seen them up on stage. I've seen their experience. They know what they're talking about. Um, so, so hopefully they can sort of bring that to the stage um, next week and 
yeah, I'm expecting nothing but the best. Why is kind of Web3 such an important direction that everybody's focusing on at the moment? This industry sort of loves to use buzzwords, <laughs> as we know. So we've sort of gone from, you know, Bitcoin to then crypto to blockchain to, to now it's, you know, DeFi is the hot thing, NFTs. Now it's sort of like Web3 is the big, you know, what is Web3? Why does it matter? And uh, what can we do with this sort of new buzzword um, to generate some some new hype? But essentially, it's really... I, th I feel like it's the underpinning of this whole revolution that we've seen come together, starting from you know the Bitcoin white paper um, all, all the way back in 2009. So essentially, it's looking at um, how can we upgrade the internet to give um, the users and the people on the internet that are accessing it, that are a part of it, better control of their data, of what they're doing, of the things that they're able to use and trade and own. Um, in the, this new virtual world that we're all diving further and further into. Um, so I'm really excited to see what we can do with, you know, NFT access, NFT gating, you know, how you can own different things, different parts of the metaverse, how you can trade from, you know, one platform to another, how you can go from different chains with your own, you know, your custom skins or your custom artwork or whatever it might be. Well, we're really looking forward to coming down to the event. Uh, our whole show is going to be from there next week. So make sure you check in. And Ashton, thank you very much for joining us. Can't wait to see you there. It's going to be an awesome time. And for anyone who is interested in picking up tickets to Zebru, uh, the link to buy tickets is in the pinned comment. And don't wait too long because there's not many left. So if you want to go, get on there and get them now. So what do we make of that, people? Confidence back in network? Do we feel like things are heading in the right direction? Uh, obviously, lots coming up over the next month or two, so it'd be great to start seeing that metaverse actually exist in real in real life. I, I guess it can't be in real life, can it? But actually see it on our computers or virtual reality headset. And don't forget, if you do want to head to Zebu Live, the link to get your tickets is in the pinned comment. Come along, hang out with the new kids. See these guys. You, get, you get to see us before, without the sort of de-aging cosmetic and tool. And the 14% stretch 14 we put on ourselves. And the stretches and also make us look a lot better than we actually are. <laughs> Come and see us in real life. We do though. It'll be a lot of fun. And remember, until we see you next time, coming live from Zebu Live, well, live-ish. Well, we'll be there. You've, You've been blockchained. Been blockchained.